out and about. I'm Tamara and today I am out at the Skeena Sawmills to learn how they turn a tree into lumber. So let's go meet Gina Campbell who is going to take us on the tour and find out how they do this. Let's go! Hi Dina. Hello. How's it going? Good, how are you? I'm good, I'm thank good. you. So we're here for a tour if that's possible to find Absolutely. out how we go from tree to lumber. Absolutely. All right, yep. great. So what we have to do first is get you into some PPE, some personal protective equipment. PPE. <laughs> yes. Personal protective exactly. equipment. So the hard hat, safety glasses, high-vis vest. So we can get you suited up and they'll take you out to the mill. Um, we'll start at the end and we'll tour right through it so you can see the process of the trees or logs going in and the lumber coming out. Cool. All right. Let's go. Okay, so we're going to get you suited up in a hard hat and the safety glasses, these ones here, will go fit over your glasses. Okay, and the vest, the high vis vest, so we can, everybody can see you. Yeah, you can tighten it up at the back. There's a ratchet back there. Oh, okay. Yeah. Just like a bike helmet. Yeah. This is, uh, and these are all adjustable. Can't have anything too loose flying around out there. Is there any danger that I'll be mistaken for a piece of wood or something? <laughs> Pretty much not. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay. We're we good. good to go. So we go through the process, um, safety orientation, and then we do a safety tour. Okay. So. so so we are now in the back, well, kind of, in the beginning of the back, where it all happens. So where is the, the middle part? <laughs> so we're going to go over to the sawmill, um, and we'll start at the very end where the number one cutoff saw is, uh, and you'll see the process, how it cuts the logs, and then it'll go through the number one debarker, and we'll see that process out there. So we're going to head right out to the mill, to okay. the far end. Okay. Let's go. This is the muster area for um, the plant emergencies if we have to evacuate the mill. Then everybody uh, musters right in here. Joe's missing, then they're going to go back inside the mill to find Joe, right? They're going to do a head count. So this is uh, the first aid room. <laughs>
ones are gonna go through a series of different saws in there. We're going to go into the file room where all the saws are sharpened now. Okay. Yeah. This is our saw file shop. All the saws and knives and are sharpened here every day. These and are huge. huge. Yeah. This one here, they can actually lower it right down. They harness up and they can lower lower it right down through the floor, right to the head ring. And they change those saws every day. At lunchtime, when the guys are on lunch, these saw guys are changing saws. So we have Mike here, who is one of the uh, saw sharpeners. Yeah. So can you tell me first of all how long you've been doing this? How long have I done it? Yeah. 50 years next year. Wow. OK, and so what exactly does it entail? Like, how do you, well, how this, do, you do this? This, this saw here, um, cuts both ways, like forward and backwards, and uh, when it's going through the wood, of course, the, the wood uh, saw actually stretches, okay. and so we have to make the metal pliable enough so that it stretches during the cut. How do you so, make metal pliable? With this machine. There's rollers, there's rollers in here that when you apply pressure to that, it actually squeezes, squeezes the metal and when you run it through there, when you squeeze the metal, it has to stretch. And uh, so the inside of the inside of here is is actually stretched more than the outside, so that when the saw is in the wood, it actually this allows that to stretch. If you didn't have that, it would crack. That's in a nutshell. It's, uh, and how long does it take to sharpen one of these saws? We took this one off at 12 o'clock or 11 o'clock, and. Uh, by the time I check them over like this, which I do all the time. Uh, then I put it on the grinder. You can put the grinder on if you want. The grinder? You want to see a grinder?
is called the Pony Edger. The Pony, the Pony Edger? through a labyrinth that was like a mile long. <laughs> I know right, this is the yeah. kiln this is a kiln this is what dries it it takes um, 60 to 100 hours to dry a charge 60 to 100 hours. hours yeah it's just a big oven it is it's just like a sauna in there doesn't that make it moist how no. does that dry it <laughs> no it's not it's dry heat oh, I don't okay. know just and 
Have you guys had any problems with dust buildup like they had? Like I um, mentioned in the you know, we, we did a little bit once, like um, WCB was in here, but you know what, we have people on seven days a week cleaning. We have an afternoon crew come in just to clean the dust. So, yeah, we even got feather dusters, that's how. <laughs> but yeah, they come in and they clean up everything for the day. Dust, wood, chips, sawdust, everything, and then they start fresh the next day. And then we have a weekend cleanup crew that comes in too. Everybody want to go jump in it? It's me. <laughs> they used to use it as an insulation in the houses instead of instead of fiberglass. They had wood chips in there, like years ago. This is nice. See, I just want to lie in it. Though. I know, hey. <laughs> I think I will just lie in it. Just lie back. It's good. It's soft. <laughs> it's warm. It is warm. It is. It's really soft. It is like. Yes. This is better than a beanbag chair. I know, right? <laughs> Good night, people. I do want to jump around in it. Like, I know, right? Look it's at how springy it is. Soft and, yeah. Okay, I just have to take a selfie. Like, Doesn't it smell good, too? Like, it's very springy. Like, you can yeah. jump in it. <laughs> okay. Oh, it just got down my pants. <laughs> Oh, and in my shoes. So this is the planer we're so going to? So this is the planer mill. This is our called our tilt hoist operator. So then the lumber will all come along this table. Our lumber feeder guy stands here and he feeds, makes sure it's straight and it goes through the planer. And so when the lumber comes out, if it's green, it gets sprayed in there. Yeah, okay. Normally we have like four graders standing here and they're grading lumber with the oh, chalk. Get to play with chalk. I know, you want to play hopscotch? <laughs> so it comes to the trim saws where it's trimmed again and then it goes, you know, down here into the chipper, right? So now it comes up here and it goes onto the J-bar, just like the sawmill. Oh yeah. It picks it up and it's going to put it in bins here. So we have the same process. Oh, okay. And so what's the difference between this side and where we were? Well, that's rough lumber. They're just cutting it from a tree. Oh, this is the plane. And this is all plane. Oh, okay. Yeah. Once they get a lift of lumber, then it goes through the bander and they put bands on it. Metal bands. And then it goes out and it, it's either wrapped or it's, uh, the ends are painted. Yeah, it's definitely a lot softer, smoother. Less risk of getting splinters. Ray room and the bander. This is where these guys are putting a big metal straps on it. That's the bander. I know, hey? Please watch oh. step. So much to look at around here. Like, it's just crazy. There's so much happening. Okay. So most of our lumber goes to oh, yeah. China. Yeah. Um, our genban goes to Japan. That's our best of the best. What do you really call it? Genban? Genban. So yeah, most of our lumber, like Japan, China, and to the U.S. So they spray paint the ends because the ends are freshly cut and we don't want the ends soaking up moisture. But the stuff that's kiln dried, once it goes through the planer, we don't want it sitting out in the weather, so we wrap it with the paper. So you see the dunnage underneath, those little pieces of wood with the, oh, see how it fits there with the, the yeah. straps on it? So it doesn't damage the, the wood. wood. You know, the logs are stacked from here right through all the back, right? And so where do, do your logs come from? They come from the area, Kitimat. Um, there's different places, different loggers have yeah. their own. But yeah, that's pretty much it. And then again, the scale shack's way over there. And so basically, that's our process. From the time it comes in to it comes back out here. And so that's what it starts out as. Yeah. yeah. There and the logs, and it goes this whole long process. And then we get these beautiful pieces of lumber green or treated. Ugh. It's green because it's not painted. It's heavy. Oh yeah. wait, green this, is painted. Yeah. Yeah, the green, the, the ends are painted. If it's dried like that one there, it's he's going to stack it over there because it's so then, wrapped. Wow. So that's pretty much it in a nutshell. We'll walk off into the horizon. <laughs> Where's our sunset? <laughs> That is how a tree becomes a piece of lumber. Thanks to Dina Campbell here at Skeetina Sawmills for taking us on the tour. 
Dina, what exactly is your title here again? I'm Administration Assistant, Human Resource Manager, and a Level 3 First Aid Attendant. And a very good tour guide. If you want a tour, come on down, talk to Dina. Not for the next two weeks, though. She's going to be in Jamaica. <laughs> but any time after that. Thanks again, Dina. Thank you. It's good to have you here. Thanks. And we'll see you guys next time on the next Out and About. The sawdust was awfully fun. It's very spongy. It feels like a, I don't know, it feels like a marshmallow or a sponge or something. But I got so much in my boots. Yeah. smokes. Ugh. I would advise to jump in a sawdust pile if you get a chance though. It's much fun. Taking a selfie.